Welcome, Welcome to Edgy Mystery. France, a country renowned for its rich history, stunning architecture, and vibrant romantic culture, as well as haute couture and some of the world's finest cuisine. The French are equally celebrated for their magnificent heritage as they are criticized for their allegedly disagreeable attitude, particularly toward foreigners. As someone who's resided in France for several years, I can understand the dichotomy of love and hate that frustrates so many tourists. At the same time, it takes so little to be mesmerized by France's beauty. Yes, the brazenness of the locals can chip away at one's self-esteem and leave visitors wondering why they subject themselves to such condescending behavior, only to remember, after all, miss, this is France. And yet, no matter how frustrating France might be, people keep going back to it. Because despite the drama and occasional heartache or bruised ego, everyone knows that once they arrive, they're in for a good time. Obviously, I'm not here to promote France as a tourist destination, nor does this country need my endorsement. Instead, we'll be exploring the uncanny myths and enduring horror stories that have shaped France's legacies through literature and fine arts, some of which have even gained prominence abroad, but more on that later. What's up, you amazing Anglophiles? I'm Courtney, and today we'll explore the sixth installment of our international urban legends. Please like this video and click the subscribe button if you enjoy this content. I'm trying to make this channel grow and every little bit helps. Thanks. Now, in today's episode, we'll explore several of France's most prominent urban legends and chilling tales. During this time, we'll also cover conditional grammar for enhancing English comprehension, whether it's within the shadowy corners of the Palais Garnier, the sinister shops of Ile de la Cité, or the deceptively picturesque town of Montélimar. As usual, I'll start by introducing a quick crash course in conditionals and then apply examples to each story. Firstly, what are conditionals and how are they used? Good question. Conditionals help to express situations and their possible outcomes. They are a way to discuss things that could happen, might happen, or didn't happen. Conditionals often involve an if clause, which is the condition, and a main clause, which is the result. We have the zero conditional to talk about things that are generally true, especially laws and rules that contain if plus the simple present. For example, if you heat water at 100 degrees Celsius, it boils. Then we have the first conditional to talk about future situations we believe are real or possible. It's structured as if or when plus the present simple, which leads to will plus the infinitive. If you come to the party, then I will go too. We use the second conditional to imagine present or future situations that are impossible or unlikely in reality, and it is structured usually as if plus past simple, followed by would plus the infinitive. If I didn't have so many responsibilities, I'd travel more. Most audiences will recognize this title from the popular Broadway production of the same name, as well as several film adaptations that vary in terms of success and popularity. The story is set in Paris's Grand Palais Garnier Opera House, and the main character of the story is a deformed and isolated man named Eric. Eric, also known as the Phantom, resided in the cold, dark catacombs directly beneath the Opera House. Eric wore a mask to hide his grotesque appearance, which would evoke a sense of horror and revulsion from anyone unfortunate enough to see his deformities. Portrayals of the Phantom have varied between him being a bitter, vindictive character who gave into violent impulses as retribution toward a society that shunned him. Other times, he was presented as a misunderstood musical genius who longed for companionship. In the story, the Phantom discovered a new addition to the theater's performers, a young and talented singer named Christine, and he fell in love with her instantly. From that moment onward, he vowed to make her the prima donna of the opera and hoped that under his tutelage, he would not only mesmerize the audiences along with her, but also have her reciprocate his affection. Of course, we know the ending is a tragic one, and the Phantom was doomed to carry out the remainder of his life alone. The ending is almost as sad as the origins of this story, which are allegedly inspired by the life of a young pianist named Ernest. In 1873, Ernest was disfigured during a fire at the musical conservatory. 
His fiancée, a ballerina, died during the fire, and inconsolable and scared of what people would think of his appearance, he sought shelter in the Opera Gavnier's vault. He lived next to the famous lake tank found underneath the Gavnier as a means of protection in case of fire. He devoted the rest of his life to his art and the completion of his oeuvre, a hymn to death and love. If you read the original story, you understand why it has inspired so many adaptations. If you visit the Palais Garnier, you will learn more about this fascinating history and its legends. If Ernest had not been disfigured in the fire, he might have lived a completely different life. On the bustling streets of Paris during the 15th century, there was a barber who conspired with a cook to have the most profitable pastry shop, and they would achieve this by selling minced meat pies which would contain a secret ingredient, the remains of barbershop customers. If this sounds familiar to any of you, it's because the events would later be featured in a Victorian British series of cheap, sordid tales that were commonly known as Penny Dreadfuls. The story was Sweeney Todd. I won't go into the gruesome details of how the pastries were prepared. Suffice it to say, if customers visited the barber for a shave, they were unlikely to be seen again. Most of the victims were said to be young men from abroad who had come to Paris to study. The barber and the baker's scheme was discovered after a dog barked outside their cellar, alerting locals who then pried open the doors to find the remains of multiple young men and various equipment for butchery. The barber and the baker were arrested and executed shortly thereafter. If people read Penny Dreadfuls, they recognized the gruesome tale of Sweeney Todd. If you visit the locations where these events allegedly took place, you will hear many chilling stories from the locals. If the dog had not barked, the horrifying scheme might have continued for much longer. Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris is world-renowned for its astonishing architecture and is among the most notable fixtures of Paris's many monuments. One aspect of the church that has stirred visitors' interest and sparked multiple debates about their formation are the intricate side doors. According to local legends, a young blacksmith named Bicornet was commissioned during the 13th century to create the intricate ironwork for the cathedral's doors. If Bicornet had completed the task on his own, he would have required years to accomplish it. However, he was able to complete the doors within only a few months, and upon finishing his project, visitors allegedly found him unconscious on the floor of his workshop. As these events took place in the Middle Ages, when people were both devoutly religious and superstitious, Rumors circulated about Bicornet making a deal with the devil in order to obtain extraordinary artistic talent and recognition. Adding to Notre Dame's mystique, there is a legend that on the day of the cathedral's consecration, the doors would not open until they were sprinkled with holy water, breaking the devil's hold. If visitors look closely at the ironwork, they notice the extraordinary detail that sparked these legends. If you visit Notre Dame, you will hear a fascinating story about Bicornet's mysterious craftsmanship. If Bicornet had not been so desperate for recognition, he might not have been tempted to make a deal with the devil. In October of 1979, two couples left their home in Dover, England for an early autumn road trip, traveling across the channel to spend two weeks driving through the countryside of France before finally heading off to Spain. On the night of October 3rd, the travelers were on the freeway north of the picturesque medieval town of Montélimar, looking for a place to spend the night. Why does this sound like the start of so many horror movies? Before long, they came across a hotel that fit in among the rest of the antiquated architecture and had several vacancies. Once they booked their rooms, they were struck by the lack of modern amenities. Nowhere did they find elevators, and the plumbing was allegedly outdated, while the furnishings were all wooden and outmoded. Tired and looking forward to simply carrying on with their journey, they went to sleep with plans to check out early the following morning. The next day, as the couples prepared to leave the hotel, they noticed a number of guests wearing what looked to be period clothing, including old uniforms and buttoned attire that would only be found in either a museum or on a film set. Best of all, the hotel bill came to be only a small fraction of what the guests had expected to pay. Eager to go back after their trip to Spain had ended, the couples returned to Montelimar only to discover that the hotel was no longer there. It had just vanished. While this incident can't be 100% confirmed, historians from the region claim that the details recalled by the couples were indeed legitimate and consistent for the era that they seem to have stumbled upon. 
Was this real, or was it a well-crafted hoax that both couples remained committed to? I'll leave that up to you to decide. If you plan a road trip through France, you'll often find charming and unexpected places to stay. If you find yourself traveling near Montélimar at night, you will want to be prepared for unusual encounters. If the couples had not experienced this themselves, they might have doubted the story as well. I hope you found this episode to be both interesting and informative. Were you already aware of some of these stories or did you stumble upon something entirely new? If you have any stories from France that you'd like to share, feel free to put them down below. Also, be sure to check out the other videos in my Urban Legends series where we apply English lessons to stories from around the globe. And as always, stay curious.